In today's video, an Aces system for professionals tries to win back some honor for Aces pre-builds on this channel. But first, today's video sponsor is back due to popular demand, and it's none other than Linode. Linode is a Linux-based cloud computing and web hosting service that offers multiple products to manage cloud storage, websites, databases, game servers, Kubernetes, and they can even handle whatever computational load you can imagine. Also, if you value good customer support, which you should, Linode is one of the best in the business. I mean, look at how happy these two are with their service. If all of this sounds good to you, sign up to Linode using the link in my description below to get a 60-day, $100 free credit. Thank you, Linode, for sponsoring today's video. Now today, we're not looking at a gaming system. No, this is a PC for professionals. People that do serious adult things on their systems. And you can tell it's a system for serious professionals because it's got a font on the box that isn't quite legible. Now, proness aside, this system caught my eye listed on Best Buy's site because Asus's ProArt monitors are really good. And uh, I was like, wow, okay, maybe this is gonna be a decent professional system. And then I started looking at pictures of it, and, um, well, yeah, with that, let's, let's just unbox it and have a closer look. Ooh, what's in here? I guess this is the professional e-waste. Okay, so we get a power cable and... One of the worst looking e-waste mice I've seen in a while. Oh yeah, that is an S tier e-waste peripheral right there. The keyboard's not quite as shocking as the mouse, but clearly professionals get the e-wastiest e-waste. Please don't fall. Oh. Ugh. comes with some volatile corrosion inhibitors in it. I've never seen that in a system before. But what if I want volatile corrosion? Wait, why is there dust on it? Now, on the one hand, it's quite promising. It means there's actual ventilation in the front of it. Uh, but it's not supposed to be dirty, right? Now, aside from the dirt, the front looks fine. We've got this kind of like wood slat black plastic effect that hides the quite restricted ventilation. And then next to that, we've got a couple of light bars, which I think shows CPU and GPU load. Now on the top, we've got a massive power button, which sounds okay. It's not the best power button ever. But above that, we have a lock, which I think is that, oh, it locks off the power button for whatever reason. Next to that, we've got a full-size SD card slot, two USB 3 ports, a USB Type-C port, and a microphone headphone jack. Now, these bits that poke out of the top of the case actually function as carrying handles, which is very convenient. Now, on the side, there's not much, although we do have some ventilation for the graphics card. And then around the back, we've got a surprisingly lackluster rear I.O. for a professional device. There's nothing particularly modern back here, and... There's not that much of it. Uh, although we do have a graphics card that's got some reasonable video out, and we'll have a closer look at what this GPU is once we open up the system. And then up here, we've got a small exhaust fan, which if you don't know much about fans, basically you don't want a small fan because they have to work harder to move the same amount of air as a big fan. So this 92 mil fan could be quite noisy as an exhaust, but we'll see later on. Uh, and then finally, we have a power supply down here. Wow, that is a really thin, lame bit of sheet metal for the side panel of this case. I then noticed something very exciting. Would you look at that? This system actually comes with dual channel RAM. That is, in fact, 32 gigs of RAM. So we've got two 16 gig sticks, but next to the very exciting RAM, we do have a pretty losery looking CPU cooler. So I'm thinking this may be a bit of a hot loud boy. 
Now under this sad little cooler, we do have an Intel i7-11700, which with its eight cores and 16 threads should be decent for productivity, but nothing special. Now aside from that, I'm actually not that horrified by this interior. We've got a standard MATX motherboard in here, and we've also got standard ATX power cables, which means this is a surprisingly upgradable OEM crap box. In fact, I don't see any proprietary connectors in here, which is a really nice touch. Good job on that, Asus. Uh, we've also got quite a chonky looking cooler on this RTX 3060 that comes with this model. Another thing that's a bit disappointing is this 512 gig NVMe drive is just PCIe Gen 3, which for gaming would be fine, but for productivity may be a bit of an issue depending on the use case. Around the back, the cable management is nothing spectacular, but it, it's perfectly serviceable. And then we also have a CPU cutout on the back of the motherboard tray, which is supposed to make changing out the CPU cooler easier. Aside from having been savaged by a marker for some reason, the mounting holes don't quite line up with the cutout, so uh, it's, it's not a great implementation. We've got some nice easily accessible hard drive bays for some additional professional storage. And then in terms of the power supply, apparently it's an 80 plus gold rated, uh, that's a Great Wall E500. As far as I understand it, Great Wall's not an amazing power supply maker and it is a bit of a low wattage for the system, but it shouldn't be an immediate fire hazard. But with that, let's close up the little pro art and see what kind of VD it comes with. After a surprisingly jet turbine-y startup sequence, Windows 11 did some update downloading, and then we could finally check out the bloatware situation. Ooh, that is a very professional looking background. And we've got some professional bloatware on here as well. We've got McAfee, which is like the alpha VD bloatware. But other than McAfee and the ProArt Creator Hub thing, I was surprised at how clean this Windows install was. I was also very impressed to see that the RAM was actually set at its rated speed straight out of the box, which is rare for an OEM system. Good job, Asus, that's really nice. So with that, I know that this is a pro system and it's probably gonna void the warranty, but I do wanna try some gaming on it, considering that we've got reasonable gaming hardware in here. Oh, well, that's a good start. Oh, damn. Well, we're using 1080p very high settings and yeah, okay, it's running pretty well. The temperatures are actually dropping on the CPU now that there's a higher load for some reason. Uh, and the fan is quieter. So I don't know, that's some weird behavior right there. That 11700 is not boosting very high. Actually, I, I think they may have done the age old very limited boost window so that you can cheap out on cooler trick, which that's a, that's a real OEM classic. But we'll confirm that with Cinebench a bit later. First, let's try a game that more evenly stresses the whole system. Battlefield 5 has been running for about half an hour here at 1080p high settings. And as you can see, the CPU core frequency is even lower than before. And uh, the graphics card, the RTX 3060 is kind of being bottlenecked. It's, it's not running at its full potential. Despite just that 65 watt power draw, you can see the temperatures on the CPU is still pretty high. Interestingly, the Curry's system that I bought in the UK also had an RTX 3060 in it, but it had a 12400F, so a different CPU in it. And that actually performed a decent bit better in Battlefield 5 at 1080p, uh, especially in terms of the 1% lows. Anyway, let's try out Cinebench and see what the CPU does with a more serious load. The initial Cinebench R20 result was, uh, in interesting. Whoa, that loses out to a first gen Ryzen CPU with the same core count. And while running Cinebench, you can see the CPU initially draws more than 65 watts and then almost immediately gets reined in and then sits at 65 watts for the rest of the test. Now I doubt there's gonna be anything, but let's check out the BIOS to see if there's anything we can do about the power profiles on the CPU. Okay, so this is what the BIOS looks like. It looks like a standard Asus BIOS, which is a good thing, you do want that. Power management, let's see, turbo mode. Despite initially seeming quite promising, it was still a very basic BIOS and there was nothing I could do about it, so I had to resort to Intel's extreme tuning utility. Whoa, the default turbo boost power time window is just five seconds. That means it's only allowed to boost above the 65 watts for five seconds. 
So let's drag that slider all the way to the right, up to 128 seconds and see how much more performance that gets us. And temperatures. And after changing the power profile, running Cinebench felt like torturing a baby animal. Oh, it's just pegged to 100 degrees Celsius. Oh, it sounds like it's dying. Wow, that suffering just gave us about a thousand extra Cinebench points. Now, in all fairness to Asus, that is just Intel's minimum spec for the 11700, but it does show that these systems are very much built to minimum spec and that's it. Uh, and it means that there's quite a lot of unused headroom left in these CPUs. Having said that, I did use the system for some relatively basic David editing, alt tabbing between Premiere Pro and Photoshop just to simulate my standard editing process. And with the 4K footage that I use, it was stuttery and a bit noisy, but definitely usable for my workflow. Also, I tested the SSD, and it's a pretty fast NVMe drive that should be enough for anybody looking to buy a system like this. Now that you've had a nice intimate look at the Asus ProArt, let me know in the comment section down below how much you think this system's worth, because it cost me 2,300 Canadian dollars from Best Buy, which is about 1,800 US dollars. And I don't know, Asus, that's quite a brave price for this thing. It may basically be peak OEM crap box, but that's like being the least virulent strain of gonorrhea. It doesn't really make it a premium product. And that price puts it right in the firing line of a different premium premium brand that professionals really like. Although I forgot about the light bars. Nope, never mind. Definitely worth the price.